So in 1787, Mozart traveled to Prague to conduct the premiere of his opera Don Giovanni. It was a huge success, and as much as we would have loved to be there witnessing the great master conduct his own works, of course, no one of us was, even not close. Fortunately, we do have some sources that indicate, as they say, the speed in which Mozart would have played that opera. I give you a few fragments of that opera, of course, digitally manipulated according to the literal interpretation of that one source, and I come back to you afterwards with some context of, of course, what the source is and why this could be very important. So stay tuned. If you not already ran away screaming, I give you the context and I can promise you this could be very important. What this was, what this video is about, what this Mozart performance is about, the source is Tomacek. And Tomacek was a pianist composer. He was born in 1774 and traveled to Prague in 1791 to for a performance of Don Giovanni, so not the one that Mozart conducted but it was still about the same orchestra that Mozart had been conducting four years before. And why do we have these metronome numbers by Tomacek? They were asked for by a gentleman named Fink, who was an editor in the Al Deutsche Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung, or even just Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung. And Mr. Fink writes in 1839 an article, a very strong article on where, in which he condemned, in fact, the current performances so around 1840 of musicians performing Mozart. He used a very strong word like murdering the music of Mozart. The reason why he condemned it because he said people are playing the music of Mozart way too fast. Not a little bit, way too fast. So what did he do? He asked Tomaszek, who had the name of being very close to Mozart, to give the speed indications as he remembered the Prague Orchestra performed Don Giovanni in 1791. Okay, so far so good. What is totally unimportant, and I give you also what is important and as a third reason or a third chapter, so to say, what is very important to remember, but what is not important to start with is the question if this really represents the speed that Mozart had taken in 1787. It is even not important even if this is a representation of how the orchestra in 1791 performed Don Giovanni, but because, let's be honest, Tomacek obviously wrote those metronome numbers down from memory, so we don't know if there is any change. But what is important is the fact that Tomacek was a musician, so he knew very well what he was talking about, so the Tom Tempi would appear to us as nonsense. He was a musician, very experienced one, so we can assume that he, was, he knew what he was doing. So, second thing, if we can assume as a fact that if he would have to perform an 1839 Don Giovanni according to what he believes Mozart uh, could performance could have been, that he would do it according to his own tempi. I mean, that makes sense. Thirdly, the metronome indications are being approved, in fact, by the editor, by Fink, by not by publishing them. So they were not questioned. So we can assume that those metronomes at least give a representation, very practical representation of how, of how people like Tomacek believed that Mozart had played. So as a third chapter, so to say, what is the most important thing that we can take from this is the fact that is the context. Fink, the editor, asked for Tomacek to prove, so to say, that the old tempi were slower than the present day tempi. That's 
what he asked for and obviously that's what he got because he published the tempi as we said before he didn't reject them so he approved those tempi he was happy with them so we can better take them seriously and seriously means to draw two conclusions there is no in between it's a little bit like the beethoven bach version if those tempi by john tomacek which we all agree on are very fast were taken by Fink as speed indications that he wanted to make sure could be passed on to next generations as a proof how Mozart was played in the past slower, then we must assume that around 1840 people played much faster than even those fast tempi and much faster in order, so much faster, in order that Fink used terms like murdering the music of Mozart. So let's take an aria and add 30% of speed to that. We could, we have, we get this. So, and it's not again up to me if you would agree with the fact that this last fragment totally makes no sense. But the other conclusion is that those speed indications should be read as according to the 17th century Merzen and other sources who are indicating the double beat, the one second is two second. It's not a theory, it's written in many sources as Lorenz Guardian in the interview I've done with him is explaining. If you take that old metrical time measurement, which basically is to measure time. You need two points. You cannot measure time by one point. You need two points in order to measure that one point. It's so simple, but that's my interpretation. Then the context of this story becomes a totally different one. Because then the Tomacek numbers are indeed much lower slower than we would do today and then you can imagine that around 1840 when other people like Moscheles, like Czerny or like Schindler, the biography on Beethoven, I know there is a lot to do about Schindler but read the English translation made by Moscheles in which Moscheles very finally gives his own feedback on things that he is not agreeing with with Schindler but Schindler is talking in fact a lot about Tempi also about the fact that Beethoven did not or was a little bit very unhappy in fact about the fact that at the end of his life people were performing his music faster and faster so this is all in the same line something happened 1830 1840 that there was a new generation that increased the tempi as a normal factor of evolution and I could go on and take that line until today also what we did in the historical informed performance practice with that but that would be for another video let me just focus here on Tomacek the numbers he gave on Don Giovanni if we take them literally that's the conclusion we must assume that people and orchestras at around 1840 played at speeds that we even cannot imagine someone ever could or we assume the other fact that is indeed this Two seconds is one, this time measurement, metrical time measurement, as was traditionally the case, and then this becomes a whole other story. If that's the case, we should continue with this because there is a lot to reconsider, but that's also for other videos. I'll be giving some longer fragments in the video that I will post on my Patreon wall. If you're not familiar with Patreon, the link is in the description box. That's basically a website where you could support the project we're doing, even from a few dollars a month, and you get access to the content that I published there for the Patreon community, which is basically the same, it will go a little bit more in depth and it will do more in the future. So that would be great. If this is your first time on Authentic Sound, I'd love to have you subscribed. So you stay tuned for new videos, also for the live streams. There's a little bell icon next to the subscription button. If you hit that, you can set your notification system either by mail or by push notifications on your mobile. Would be interesting perhaps for the live streams we are doing. So we're live recording all the sessions for YouTube and also we have the practicing hours where I just go with you through some music answering your questions or your remarks or just go in, in, into interaction with you. Would be great to see you then, one of those sessions. Anyway, thank you for watching and we see each other very soon again. Bye.